book of Luke, kids, you go to your class, chapter 6, or chapter 11, amen. I entitled this message this, this evening, amen, I'm not really into the titles, but this one kind of, I like, and you fill in the blanks. I only meet God when, come on, I'm in trouble. there you go, fill in the blank. That's a part of your life. Can I get an amen? amen? Jesus turns, amen, as we are reading from the Gospels, amen. And there are times in your life, amen, when you don't need God. You don't want to pray, amen. As we read in the Gospel, Christ's uh, life was about communication with the Father. Amen. He was always in communication with the Father, amen. And some of the things, amen, that we're going to learn tonight. That people tend, amen, uh, when they pray, it can become attitude, forgetfulness. Some of the issues, amen, that we can become ungrateful and forget about how much God has given you or how much people has helped you. Yes, amen. Amen, when, you know, God uses people to help you and we forget about, amen, the help you came out of. Ungratefulness. Hello. You always tend to fall back and you can get into a little place in your life. Well, they have to help me. Right. Hello? Amen. You know that God backs away from you at times. Yeah. But Jesus says this, amen, in, uh, as in Luke chapter 11. It says, it came and, it, and now when it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, and when he had ceased, that one of his disciples says to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Father, we come before you this morning or this evening, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God, this time that we communicate our lives. And many have been struggling in the area of their walk, Lord God. And this time as we're coming in, Lord God, to this season of prayer, of, of Teshuvah, Lord God, as we turn our hearts and our ways back to you. Let it your ways be, Lord God, in the way of our path, Lord God, not our own. Searching the hearts and checking our lives this evening, Lord God, as we come together, Lord God, for instruction. Father, let your Holy Spirit deal with us tonight. Bring us to repentance, Lord God. You're the King. You're the Lord. You are the Alpha, the Omega, Lord God. You stand, Lord God. You take, hear prayers and supplications, Lord God. And only you, Lord God, will help us through this time. Father, I ask for your blessing this evening in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says that when he was praying in a certain place, Jesus, Jesus often went to a solitude place to have communication with his Father. What a blessing it is. Amen. I remember many times uh, walking into the church and hearing my pastor pray. Amen. And I would catch him. Amen. And I always wanted to be. Because I want to know how he communicates with God. I was a young disciple, amen. And, and I, you know, it's to this day, I, when I hear him praying, amen, and the words that he would use, amen, were none other I, like I'd never heard before. Amen. It was a connection between him and, and, him and God, amen. And, and, and I would go in there and I would be, you know, like, man, you're walking in the presence of God right now. Hello. Because he would be in tune. And it was such a blessing, amen, to hear him. Amen. And I would sneak up, amen. And I would be like, wow. Can I get an amen? amen. And because the outcry of his heart were for the people. Amen. The burdens that he would carry, amen. And the things that we would say oftentimes when I wasn't feeling good or, or even when I would call and say when I first got here, you know, pastor, pray for the church. Pastor, pray for my marriage. Or pastor, we're going through this. You know, he would he would pray on the spot. It was like, you know, there was no hesitation. Yeah. I would listen to the words that he would say, amen. And it would really be heartfelt. Yeah. Because I know that truly, he truly cared. Yeah. And so, you know, you have a picture of, of these disciples coming to this place. Amen. And seeing Jesus in a solitude place communicating with the Father. Amen. And it was had to have been such a so powerful words that that and it was an emotional thing, amen, that it drove them to say, Teach us to pray. Right. 
It had to be something, amen, more than that, amen, because, you know, I mean, according to the word of God, amen, we who desire, we're not just here. We're people of God. We're here to help you. We're here to teach you to pray. Amen. We're here to teach you what it's like to be committed, to be faithful to God. But you have your own understanding. Are you here today? And so you have to look into the scripture as he's praying when his disciples came. Amen. They say, he says to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us like John taught his disciples. That was so, you know, when you have people following you, amen, you want to be a, a true disciple. You have to be bold enough to say, I don't know how to do the things you're doing. Right. I'm not like you, but I want to be like you, Jesus. Right. I want to pray like you. I, in other words, I want to be committed to this. Yeah. Amen. I, I truly want with all my heart, amen, to, to walk in your light. You know, you're not you're not hearing me tonight, amen, because your hearts may not be in the same area. And I hope they are. I really truly hope they are, amen, because you got, you know, what Paul had with Timothy it was something special. And here, amen, the disciples, amen, say, Lord, teach us. Right. Teach us, oh God. Because basically we don't have it together. Yeah. We don't. You know, we need that. We need that type of instruction that the Lord is giving us. And uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 10 or 12, amen. Because when you go into battle, amen, it starts with your prayer. Right. You don't know how to fight, amen. You're going to lose the battle. You're walking into supernatural things, amen. And when Christ says this, amen, to these men who desire him. Teach us, O Christ. Teach us, Jesus. Yeshua, come and show us the way. It is a very fearful thing knowing that you're coming into holiness. And when Paul, amen, had a certain place in his life, because let me tell you, you know, the battle starts with your prayer. And Paul, amen, listen to what he says here, verse 7, at least I should be exalted above all measure. By the abundance of revelation, he understood, amen, the revelation that God has given. God, if you're seeking out the Lord with all your heart and you're communicating with God, amen, he gives you deepness. Right. He gives you a greater vision than other than yourself. It's not about me and Alma, guaranteed that 100%. It's about the church of God. God is taking us to direction, amen. The direction, amen, to be fruitful in our lives together. Amen. As a couple comes together, amen, they begin to pray and cry out to God. We build a connection, a relationship as one. Amen. That's why the body must be one. Right. When we're outside the realm of God, when you go get your direction from somebody else or seek some other direction, amen, you're outside. You're not in connection where God desires you and God will bring you to correction, amen, to get you back to the place where you need to be. Paul understood it. But listen to what he says. Great revelation, he says, amen. And a thorn, a thorn was given, it was in my flesh was given to me. A messenger from Satan to buffet me. Now the word buffet means, that has two meanings here. It means to strike someone or to poke at somebody. Paul said, and it, it was given to me. Listen to what he says here, though. He says, I be exalted above all measure concerning the things that I plead the Lord three times. In other words, I've gone to prayer three times and I ask the Lord, might he depart me from me? And the Lord, and the Lord in the time of your, of your struggle, because the only when you need something, the only time, amen, when, when it really gets thick and hard, that's, that's when we need God. That's when I will make time to pray. Not when you're arrogant. Not when you're self-righteous. Not when you're feeling good about yourself and all the money's rolling in. You're, we're, we're taking care of self. We don't need God. I don't need to pray. Paul says, 
that these things were given to him, amen, because much great vision and revelation was passed on to him. And you're here today. And he says this to him, amen, my grace is significant for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Three times he would come to prayer. So many Christians today, men, don't have time to pray or have excuses why they don't pray. And Jesus shows the pattern, amen, and the life of Christ, amen. He's gone through temptation, and the enemy continued in the word buffet, Jesus, means to strike at him. Are you here today? Strike from him from all sides. How many times do you feel like, my gosh, I just can't, every time I put a foot up, man, I'm getting pushed back. Every time I'm going this way, there's something else. Well, those are signs. God is speaking to you. God's trying to tell you something, amen. You know, I find myself in a position where a lot of people want to come to me to get my understanding or, or to uh, get direction, but don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that right now. No, Pastor, I come with you with some news here, and you're giving me something I don't want to hear. Hello. I'm talking to a young man today, and I love you, know, Bobby. I hope he's watching. Amen. <laughs> pray for him. I pray for him. It's like you. You should be praying for people. You should be praying for people. We pray for ourselves and our needs and everything that's fun for me. This is why the life of Christ was difficult. He was attacked from many sides. Amen. And imagine this. He he goes and he has this, a day of casting out demons and healing people, healing the sick. Amen. And then, and then his day is bogged down by, you know, all the cares of the world that's happening on him. He, he needs some energy. He's exhausted. Amen. And he's losing, you know, he can lose your perspective spiritually. What do we do? Let's go take a nap. Come on, you, I'm hard day. Come on, you know you. As soon as the day is over, I'm going to go home and take a nap. Come on. I know some of you. Amen. Man, you, come on, you take a nap. I've had it. I'm dead. I'm bad. Yeah, I'm just, let me tell you. Oh, my God. I just wore out today. And so, man, I'm going to get home. I don't care. Maybe you won't make it to your bedroom and the couch is just fine. My, I want my couch. Boom, there it goes. But that's how we solve our problems. We take a nap. Christ didn't do those things. When he was dealing with people, and if you understand, because some of you forget what it is to deal with people. Dealing with their problems and their issues and everything that goes on in life, and then you're bombarded. This is why, you know, Pastor Joe needs a lot of prayer. Yes, amen. I go and pray. I come to pray, not just to for myself, amen. Help me to deal with the situations of today. Yes, amen. And a lot comes your way. I pray for my wife. Oh, God, help her. Yes, amen. Because you know what? Some ladies don't like to hear it. They don't want to, they don't want to receive it. Rather go outside the church to get direction. Like I said, you're not going to want to hear me, but too bad. Because we live in a life you find yourself drained. At the end of the day, you're drained. Jesus found himself at prayer when he was drained. The answer is Christ, always. He didn't go take a nap. He, he needed solitude. He, he would get up early in the morning after... Uh, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning 4 o'clock in the morning after a long day and start his day with prayer right. go alone by himself amen let me tell you what he locked to Matthew 26 verse 40 he tells his disciple amen can't you not watch for one hour to pray there it is right there can you pray for an hour right. yeah. let me tell you something when you get down ready to pray the battle has started but God, you know, you're supposed to be on my side. Why aren't these things happening? What are you doing? 
He says, watch. He says this here. He tells his disciples, amen. Watch, pray, at least you fall into temptation. Spirit is what? Indeed willing. But what is your flesh? It's weak. Paul understood that. He said, you know, this is where he came. God, you know, man, I've got great revelation, great understanding, amen. I've seen things. I've done things for you, Lord God. But I got this one naggy thing on me. Please remove it. Remove it out of my way, God. This is that one thing that's going to hinder you. Yeah. There's a sudden in your life. My heart falters around. I need to check my heart now, God. What's going on with me? There's something going on with me. And, and the Lord turns around him and it tells him. I mean, you, I'm not going to remove that. I'm not going to take that away from you. Yeah, that's what you want. You want me to remove it. That's what we want. Right. Remove it out of the way. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> remove it, God. <laughs> Imagine that. Take it away from me. I pleaded with God to plead him and you're there. Have you ever pleaded with God? You ever got down on your knees and just say, God, please help me. Please. I mean, I'm desperate right now. Yeah. Please help me. Yeah. Is it really heartfelt? Mark chapter 6, amen. Or excuse me, Matthew chapter 6. He, the same request comes. He says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. For they love praying, standing in the synagogues. You know, I remember this person that used to come to our church. You remember asking, you know, do you need to pray for somebody? She said, no, I don't need to. I don't need to pray. I don't want to pray. I don't need to be on my knees to call to God. Well, you, don't, you, don't you have anybody to pray for? No. The arrogance on that heart. The arrogance. Well, don't you want to pray with? No. Don't want to. The ugly comes out. The attitude. Today. It's a time of prayer, man. And no, the attitude of self right This is what he said. Don't be like the hypocrite. Don't be self-righteous. Some self-righteous people forget who they are. Do you hear? You forget where you come from. Forget the struggle, and now we got everything you want. What happened? Straight out told me, I don't know. No, I'm good. I'm good. But when her husband got saved, then she cried out. The ugliness of that side, the self righteousness. And you don't realize, amen, the things, amen. And this is what people want to hang around with. Hang around with the hypocrites and self-righteous people. Why? It's ugly. The Lord says, don't be like that. What, you know, I need some heartfelt prayer. If he told Paul, amen, I put this in your life, amen. He said, Paul recognized it as a thorn. That thorn that comes into your side, amen, that pricks on you, it's just there, it's there. It's a, a pinching thing. God, take it away, take it away. We want it to be gone, amen. No, no, God, please. What is the one sickness you just can't get rid of? You, can, you know, I have eye problems. I have this kind of a problem. What is it, God, that I'm doing wrong? You ever asked yourself, what did you sow into? What came out of your mouth a few months ago? Oh, we got this under control. Oh, God's got this. And then the testing comes. Where's your heart? Right. We stop praying for that. We got we got it. We don't need to pray on it. You better get back on your knees. This is about God. This is what God is doing today. Don't be like the hypocrites. The word that God sees in the Hebrew word is called tilifa. It means to pray. It's a Hebrew word, amen. Let me spell it for you because my wife said I need to spell these. If I get this wrong, you know, I'll hear it after from somebody. But it's T-E-F-L-F-I-L-L-A-H. And what it means is God's putting things in order. 
Prayer is about God putting your life in order. Remember some of you, amen? Remember some of you we had before? I remember a lot of, a lot of people. Especially some that used were dope things and had nothing. What did God do? Who could do that? God puts your life in order and we forget about those things. Puts things in order, what happens? Healing, brokenness, hurt body, mind, spirit. Prayer changes everything. Prayer can change your attitude. Keeping yourself humble. This is I truly believe this with my heart. I don't know about you people. How you are. I know for me, and I speak for myself, I mean, my wife knows. God keeps me on my knees. He keeps me on my knees. You know what it's like to continue to pray for somebody who just continues does the same circle of things all the time. Guys that keep coming back to the home, back and forth, back and forth, and you keep warning them, hey, it's going to get bad, it's going to get bad, it's going to get worse. And when the worst comes, they leave and go do their living. You, you can go home and lay on your pillow. Amen? I was telling, telling these guys, when men leave the home, it stays with me. That's my wife. All you got to do is pray. That's it. You go to sleep, I pray. When people act up, amen, and Jesus knew about this because he was going through it, amen, because boy, this is what people do. I'll go, I'll go outside of Pastor Joe and Sister Alma because they're not telling me what I need to hear. I like a soft word, and you know, I'm going to go to a hypocritical person over here who tickles me. That's the truth. That's the truth. Saddest, the saddest things, amen, is what are you willing to change? What are we willing to change? Challenges in your life, I mean, if God, if the prayer in Hebrew means to put things in order, why wouldn't we let God put those things in order? Right. Well, I am trusting. Really? I do pray. Come on, everybody says it. Well, you need to pray. I do pray. Yeah. <laughs> well, what kind of prayer is it? Well, you're stepping our bounds now. It's between me and God now. So why are you coming to me? <laughs> Mark chapter 5. Jesus gives us some illustrations or examples of prayer. Why? We have to have, amen, this heart, like Paul says. Paul sharing with the church, man. I, I've been, you know, God gives me visions. Amen. Sometimes I don't like to say them, amen, because I and sometimes your reaction is like, eh, yeah, all right, that's <laughs> Oh. You know, I had rapture fish, man. Those are scary. Are you here? I've had some rapture visions, man, that are like, and I think if I forget everybody, I forget everybody. What about me? <laughs> I don't want to be left behind. Everybody's going and I'm not here. Why? What did I do? Are you here? Amen. I want to be with Jesus. I don't want to be here. With all due respect to everybody. If you get to go and I get to stay, oh my gosh. Hello. That's rude, Pastor. Jesus, a demon. And helps a young man who lost his mind that no disciple, no person could ever relate to. A man who, who just loses it. Nobody wants to go and touch him. And, and his answer was through prayer. We find him in a couple examples. I'll get back to him in a second. Amen. And here in in verse 21, the Bible says, Now Jesus crossed over again to the, when the boat on the other side of the... Of the uh, and a great multitude gathered with him. And as he had come by the sea, and behold, amen, a ruler of the synagogue came to... Uh, 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 a ruler of the synagogue came, Jar, Jarvis, amen, 
by name, he says, and when he had saw, he had fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, my little daughter, amen, lies in the point of death. Come and lay hands on her. My little daughter, she's 12 years old and she needs help. You know, here, here's a man who has a, 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 a position in the synagogue, in the church. He has a position. Man, he's a man of study. He understands the word of God. Daughter's sick, amen, and, 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 and you know, all else, all that means nothing anymore. All that means nothing no more. I'm going to go to Jesus because he is the healer. He, he's the one, amen. I need, I need Jesus. Amen. And he runs to him, amen. All, and, and you don't realize or understand, amen, what that really means. But he encounters, amen, this, and Jesus comes and encounters, amen, this person with this bad uh, situation in his life. came, he wasn't like, well, I prayed, I did all, that's all I can do, just leave it, that's it, walk away. No, he had a desperate need, his daughter, his daughter was sick. His daughter was very sick. And the emptiness in his heart, he becomes a daddy now. Are you here today? What would you not do for your children? Hello? Hello? It's your kid, amen, and, and, and you know what? I give it to God, that's it. Well, what direction are we going here? I need Jesus to help me here. Well, well, how desperate are you before? Well, here's, everybody's following him and tugging on him, and, 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 and all this is taking place, amen, and, and then, and then uh, you know, he she goes to him, and Jesus says, okay, I'll go. Where is he at? Where is she at? Go over here. Let's go. He responds immediately. Responds. God responds to my prayer. Don't you? Fix it. That's it. No, it's all good. Now what are you going to do with it? Now what are you going to do? How many hear me today? So you got what you have here. There's two stories going on. You got a, a young lady that's 12 years old that is very sick and dying. And now the Bible says as he begins to walk and follow and go, people start tugging on him. And now the Bible says here, verse 25, there was a certain woman who had, an, had a flow of blood for 12 years and suffered many things, amen, and from many physicians. And she spent all that she had and was no better. But the, but, the, but the problem grew worse. How many know it grows worse? Her, all she had, amen, everything. This is what people do today. We get, that's why we don't get direction from God. We, that can't be from God. I'll go outside and go get some help from somebody else. Who wants to tell me what I need to hear? Are you here? I'll go to sister so-and-so or brother here. They have great wisdom. They have awesome wisdom. But what have they done for you? Well, they bought me some flowers last time. Huh? They bought me some lunch. Oh, that's wonderful. And they tell you what you want to hear. They don't tell you the truth. I said they don't tell you the truth. Amen. So we don't we avoid those issues. Here's the encounters, amen, that the story with a woman of issue of blood and, and, and his daughter who was dying. And then the Bible says, amen, that you know, after all that she had, it got worse, and and, and then all of a sudden she the story shifts. And Jesus, and, and, and when it grows worse, she's seen all that, and she's seen Jesus, and she came behind him, amen, and she, and the crowd was there, and all she wanted to touch was the garment. Right. Are you here? Yeah. If only I can touch his garment. If only. 
If only we had that much faith. If only we could be committed and faithful like that young lady. And not go anywhere else but here. We're not challenging you to anything else. You're a leader. You need to be challenging, man. Your you're, you're challenge is to be faithful to God and pray. You know, you pray. We pray, God, help our family. Yeah, well, let's bring some destruction on them. Like, that's not help, God. Like, how did you? How did? How do we want the story to go? Huh? My family prayed for me, and it got worse. Got shot, got stabbed. All those things happened to me. You know what? Don't pray for me because I get shot and stabbed. You get beat up. You get all these bad. You, you know why? Because, you know, they're praying for you, for your salvation. Things have to get bad. You have to go through those things as, as a warrior, as a prayer. Pray for their salvation. Things go get worse. They get totally worse. Woe is me. Oh, no, woe is you. You're good. Hang in there. Emotionally, it hurts. Spiritually, they need to get it. Are you here? Emotionally, we don't like to see what they're going through. But this is the results of their salvation. That one day they get to stand up and say, you know what? I was messed up, man. I was lost and I was bound, man. I had all these problems. But I know there was a church praying for me. Yeah. I know a church over there in Roswell was praying for me. And these things were happening, man. And all hell was breaking loose on me. But today I'm standing up here today to let you know that Jesus Christ saved my soul. Can I get an amen, church? What is the greatest gift at all that you see people coming to Christ? What is the greatest gift amen, that you can see them, that you pray for that individual? Now they're free. Amen. Maybe not the way you want it, but you pray for them. Yes, amen. We don't like it that way. Hello. We don't like it that way. So this young lady comes. The issue of blood, there she is. If I could just touch him. How many, how many lost their desperation? How many of you lost your desperation? I can have Bible knowledge. I can tell you what Hebrews said. I can teach you a lot of things. But I, if I have no desperation, if I lost my desperation for souls, there's something surely wrong with this church. If you lose your desperation of love, you mean, God, I need you more, Jesus. Yes, I'm going through it. I'm getting, this has happened to me, but you know what? You're in charge of my life. Amen. I believe with all my soul, and you're about to make a turnaround, oh God. Amen. Things are about to happen, but the shaking must come. Yes, amen. When's the last time we were like that young lady? Lord God, let me just touch you, Jesus. Let me just grab the, if I could just grab the hem. What happened to desperation? You know what we pray? Over there. Not here. Are you here? Where's the desperation for Jesus? Where is it? He is the answer. Not anything else. Place, amen, will become critical and cynical. Are you here? What is the, the word desperation means hopeless sense that the situation is so bad that it's impossible to deal with. It's impossible. There's no way. I have nothing left. Just let me touch. Just let me get a hold of the hem of his garments. Just let me do those things. The desperate woman comes. Amen. Just let me make my way through. You know when you're trying to make your way through things in life? Yes, because you try here before. We try. How many know we tried before? Yes, amen. See, God, right now I believe in my heart. God's trying to deal with some of you and ignoring him. Come on. That's what people do. Yes, 
I don't, I'm, not, I don't, I'm gonna face him out right now because why? The spirit right now wants to deal with some hearts, amen. But hearts are becoming hard. Yes, amen. No, no, the, the, you don't know my situation. It doesn't matter. God knows the situation. Yes, amen. I've become desperate for Christ. Yes. I don't care. I, I just like, you know, God. Everybody says everything they want out there. Fear has come all over the pit, please. We're gambling with things now. But we need to trust in you, Jesus. Amen. The church needs to trust in you more. Just like this young lady, she became so desperate to touch just the hem of his, his garden, the hope of healing. Desperate in a time. And then all of a sudden, amen, she's healed. Hmm? She's healed. Jesus turns and will touch me. Who touched me? It wasn't a rebuke. It wasn't like, hey, go get it over here so I can take that healing back. It wasn't like that. He just wanted to let her know, your faith healed you. Your faith, you, you, you had a prayer. It healed you. If we can be like that. We can think like that. And finally, Jesus, Jesus shows up. He finds, you know, I, I, I look, I was reading this, amen, that, that Jesus shows up, amen, and he goes in and walks into the home and everybody's crying. Are you here? Right. Everybody's crying. The Bible says here, Peter, James, and John, and the brother James, amen, and then they came and they went into the house and ruler of the synagogue. And there they were, amen, and, and everybody's weeping and wailing loudly. Ah! Just broke. 
feel for this man. I pray, I said, Jesus, only God can comfort his heart. Yeah, only God can help him. Yeah. No one can ever understand what that's like. In my mind, no one understood me. Okay? And, and, and when Jesus says, don't, don't worry, she's just sleeping, man, just chill out. And, and, and they thought how ridiculous he is. You know, one of the things that we find that he does, amen, is that, that, that Jesus starts to clear out the house. You know, we have to remove the problem, the doubt, the fear, the what ifs. There's no what ifs in God's plan. He, he's removed those things from your heart, amen. God, Jesus begins to get all the cry babies and get out. You're going to cry, go have your emotional moment over there because I'm about to do something. If you want God to do something, amen, the tears have to stop. The tears has to be removed, amen. The doubt has to be emptied out, man. you got to trust in the mighty hand of God, amen. You have to understand what Christ is trying to do, amen, because let me tell you, there are people, amen, who stand back, amen, who spectate, who can tell you all these things, amen, but never tell you the truth, amen. They'll paint it a certain way, and when things happen, you end up blaming God for it. He has to remove the problem. Because our fears and tears and problems and doubts become major problems. And you're going to trust in the Lord. So he moves everybody out. He takes these three disciples in. And he prays. I love this prayer. Well, I had, to, had a hard time saying it myself. Listen to what he says here. He, and then he took the child by the hand and says to her, Tifal, Tifal, Kaimi. Okay, well, you said it better now. I had it all perfect. I was going to say it. Say it this way. Oh, yeah. All right? Means rise, my little lamb. Rise, little girl. Are you here? And she rose. We want God to do something. Amen. We want God to say, fix this problem. And God wants to fix that problem. Are you here? It means to trust in him. And what he says, he has to remove the worst fears of your life. Amen. And he says, rise. In other words, get up. Yes. Shake it off. Get tough about it. You know who's in charge. You got to trust in Jesus. I mean, hear me. Yeah. He's going to take care of it. Don't make emotional decisions or rash things that you're going to say wow. or out of things. Amen. Because you're emotional. Amen. This is why we have to remove the problem, get out of the way, focus. This is why, you know, you can have a crowd of people, amen, one person has a problem, and you have 50 answers. <laughs> right? Someone falls on the ground, it's broke. No, no, it's not broke. You know, oh my gosh, it's really bad. It's, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you better run to the hospital. You get bad news, and the IRS send me a letter. <laughs> I lost all my money. It doesn't say that. <laughs> Peter, Pastor, read it. Huh? Oh, you're good. Whew. Pastor said that was good. <laughs> Remove that fear. I, I, I love this. I, I, I said it before. I'll say it again. Okay, I love this story. I remember, I always remember the thing. All my life. And everybody in our barrio was a mechanic. Okay? Someone's car broke down or something. All you have to do is go outside and open your hood, stand there and just do this. Before you know it, you got Chico coming over. What's the problem? And then you got. Over here, Pancho, because Pancho. Hey, ¿qué pasó? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. See? Then 
you got five or four other guys coming by, and they're all looking at What are we looking at? Oh, he eats right there. <laughs> Take some hours, and they're all looking at nothing, and then they turn around and say, now start it. <laughs> no, I don't want to start it. <laughs> and they all have, well, it might be the battery. <laughs> no, I think it's a carburetor. No, that's not the carburetor, it's, it's the gas pump. You got four or five different directions to go. Come on, guys, we experienced that, right? Thank God for the computer, plug it in, Dave said, there it is. Am I right or wrong? You got five or six people standing there putting the worst fear in you. You need a new transmission, you need a new this. out it was just no gas in it. <laughs> Come on church. Yes, amen. Surround yourself around people with doubt. Surround yourself with naysayers. Put yourself and you go down and try to find everybody to agree with you instead of doing what's right. Trust in Jesus. Amen. Don't have fear of anybody. Amen. Remove God. God what did I need to do? I don't or I'm afraid for them. Stop being afraid. Yeah. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Turn to him. He took everybody Amen. out. Just come on, get on up. Yes, and the little girl got up and then there was a celebration. Yes. I mean, no, when God just blesses your life, amen, yes. and doors, oh my gosh, he did it, he did it. Were you surprised? Amen. You should never be surprised. When he deals the same issue, a young man who's cutting himself and doing all these things to him, hurting himself, amen. And he attacks, he comes out, and Jesus just calmly says, what's your name? I'm legion. I have all these devils. Be gone. Where did he find the man? Right there. Where? On his knees. What's your problem tonight? Why can't we just turn to God in prayer? Yes. Because let me tell you something. One thing that we have not learned. When we pray, we're in a battle. We're going to battle. As people, amen, have been. And let me tell you something. This church has been hit. Hello. Many of you can live in denial. Okay. Many of you can have that in your heart. I can't. This church has been attacked. Our character, my character has been attacked. Your character has been attacked. Yeah. We've had accusers. Yeah. We've had battle after battle. Yeah. And then spiritually, financially, every which way, it's been attacked. Yeah. It's been challenged, amen. People say this and people have accusations. And, we're, and here we are still standing. We pray for something that happened, amen. And let me tell you something. People have betrayed, walked away, had the enemy. I've seen men and women get swooped up, amen, by manipulators, by liars, by all these things, amen. And they're out there, and they're still out there doing their nonsense. Ridiculous things, and the enemy, and all I see is the, it's an attack from the enemy. We've been attacked in every which way. And the enemy is trying to attack you now and with a lack of the lack of commitment, the lack of fellowship, the lack, amen, of follow-up of all those things. Amen. The enemy is comes in and we don't see it. We get mad at people. We can say this. I've been there. You, you can't tell me because I've been there. I've been hurt by people. I've been hurt by this and that. And I can cry all day. My wife has endured some stuff. Yes. And all I say is, Lord God, remove that, please. Yes. Yes. Because these same people are there to divide us. Yeah. That's what the enemy does. Right. He wants to divide. People forsake, people walk away, they go to other places and say it's easier, and the battles go on and on and on. The battle is 
soon as you get on your knees. We don't understand spiritual warfare. Not myself, not Johnny, nobody can ever, not any one of you can stand up and explain spiritual battle. Nobody. You can get, I can write a five point sermon, good luck. Because until you start going through it, you're gonna get there and this is the answer. Amen. The answer is Christ. Yes. The answer, yes. amen, is like, how desperate are you? You know, and it's the funniest thing in life. <laughs> These, what we find ourselves doing, at least for me and my wife, we still intercede for these people. Yeah, that's right. We pray. We believe. We stand in the gap for you. Yeah. We stand there, and, and no matter what, how the enemy comes in, and, and, and I ask the question, God, that we're lacking, because Jesus turns to his disciples, the disciples says, teach us to pray. The question of communicating with God has been something that has been in our, to be in our hearts always. And communicating with God. Some people say, well, you know, I don't need to pray. I pray while I'm driving. I pray in the shower. I, I pray, you know, Paul says, pray without ceasing. But it is not heartfelt. Yeah. You must make that time yeah, for the yeah. Lord. Yeah. When guys are down, then they're praying from 12 minutes, 12 minutes, from 10 o'clock to 9 until 6 in the morning. They're praying. <laughs> did you pray? Yeah, I prayed all night. Well, so did I then. You know what I do? I worship. I put my music and I fall asleep and, <laughs> and I'm worshiping the Lord. Come on. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The battle, amen, and the task the Lord has given us. Amen. Starts with your attitude. Okay. Now, the scenarios that we see, as we read, amen, but well, one, this lady came desperate. She came desperate to the Lord, amen, with a problem. She tried to fix it herself, like many of us have done. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. I don't need uh, pastors anymore. I don't need anybody in my life. I can fix this myself, amen, until I mess it up. Okay. And then I need some help. Okay, we've been there. Me and Alma have been there. No, no, no. We don't need Oxnard. We can do it ourselves. No, no. We need our mother church. Okay. It's like our children. You know, don't do this. And they go out and they mess it all up. And who's got to clean it up? So what we learn, amen, is to stand in the gap. What is God looking for right now? God is seeking the intercessor who will stand in the gap and make a hedge for it. You are the intercessor. There's problems. You know, I get calls from this person. You know, pastor, I'm being attacked spiritually and all this stuff. I'm going to stand in the gap for you, brother. You know, we got problems with guys getting locked up again and they're going through all kinds of things in the home. We're standing in the gap together. What do they do at night? They get together and they pray. That's all you can do. Pray. Instead of going home taking it out, come on, baby girl, let's pray. Me and my mind, we pray. We got a problem. Let's pray. The enemy's not playing games right now. There's a shaking. The shaking is to put fear in you. What's our number one prayer? Don't let me get the covert. <laughs> Every time I hear that, I go home and I'm. I got a pain, I got a pain. I started looking up the symptoms. Yeah, I got that, I got that, I got that, I got that. <laughs> I don't want to talk to nobody. I want to breathe on nobody. I want to do this. Is that what we're going to do, church? How many know how to intercede? You don't know how to intercede. How many know how to intercede? Well, what's intercession? Well, uh, in Ezekiel chapter uh, 22, verse 30, the Bible says, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall or a hedge to stand in the gap for, before me. On behalf of the land, on behalf of the land, imagine this, 
that I, would, I should not destroy it, but I found not one. I found not one. I found nobody. Okay, we got some problems, church. Come on, how many, how many have problems? Come on, we have real, come on. Okay, then all of you are fine. We have problems. We have an issue, we have a problem, we have a, a situation, a dire situation, amen. The, the young lady needed desperation, amen. If I could just touch the hem of her, and if you understand the whole Talit thing, amen, what a blessing it is, amen. And I think, amen, this is what helps me to pray. I cover my head, amen. I take suggestions, amen. I hear, amen. I'll read, I'll study, I'll do it myself, oh God. Please, Lord God, and begin to pray. Protect these people, Lord God, from this sickness, Lord God. The children, Lord God, help us through this time. Let us get through that. We will be at home going through, uh, going after each other and calling each other names. This is all these accusations and all the lies of the devil are coming from, amen, because people know how to accuse and attack one another. Amen. We need to stand in the gap. Yes, amen. Let me give you a few things real quick what it takes to stand in the gap. Because if you don't know how to intercede and pray, man, it means, amen, because this is the problem, man. Amen, we pray and we have problems, amen, and we just want Jesus to take them. Well, he told Paul he wasn't going to remove it. Yeah. You got a thorn in it. There's going to be a thorn in your side. I have a lot of thorns on my side. There's always going to be that one, amen, who just irritates you, just right there, amen, and just, you know, I want to get rid of that guy. <laughs> they'll smile at you too hey yeah hey. but it's in the hands of God amen. your heart must be right yes, amen. and if the heart is right God will change it yes, I promise you if your heart's not right if your heart's in a place of doubt if you come before God in one even little more ounce of doubt fear He's not going to do anything. You're going to go through that testing. Paul said it. Lord God, remove this. He pleaded three times. He went to prayer. He pleaded three times. God, and you don't know. None of us can. Uh, you don't know until it's you. No. You do not know nothing until it's you. You can say, I have no fear. If you do. We all do. If you stand. And with a clean heart, oh God, search my right now. We're coming to the time. Search my heart, cleanse it. God, I repent every day, Lord God. I, I don't remove this out of the way. Let me have peace. Let me walk in peace. This is how I pray, church. I pray for you. I pray for our church. No, I pray for our church. I pray for people. I pray, you know, you know. I don't want enemies. I don't want anything like that. I don't care what the, Lord God, please, Lord God, let me stand in this. Stuff. You make a hedge, oh God. You know, God says, okay, let's pray for Roswell. Because you know what? Nobody likes Roswell, but they're still here. <laughs> so let's pray for Roswell that people will change their hearts. Yes, amen. Stop the madness in their lives. Yes, amen. What is it? Look at it. Abraham stood in the gap for Lot. And what happened with Lot? God rescued him. Moses stood in the gap for the people. And God forgave them. Are you here today? It starts with trusting in God. Emptying your soul. Trusting him. Put it all out there. Say, no, Lord God, you can do this. God can remove. God will heal. God, if you don't move, amen, God will be behind you. If you stand on, you stand firm, amen, and no, Lord God, you promised, you said this, Lord God, it's time to confess these things. Oh, God, don't let doubt come in your way, amen. Don't whatever they say, you serve a mighty God. You serve a God, amen, of thunder, amen. A God with a powerful sword, amen. A God who will come against anybody who comes against you, amen. We understand the power of his Lord, and do not be moved. Don't be moved by anything. Trust in the Lord. Remove the fear. Get it out of the way. Trust in Him. Starts with that. When your heart is in the right place with God, He moves from one place to the next place. He does not go back. He goes forward. How many are hearing me today? Amen. You remember the three who uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? 
Huh? What happened with them? They did not move. We're not bowing down to your devils. We're not doing no. He said, throw us in the fiery furnace. And if God doesn't save us, amen, all wrong. Man, we'll go through it. We'll go through the fire. Well, whatever it takes. But we're not moving. And they stood on the promise. And they hung in there, amen. And when they threw him in there, amen, everybody was amazed, amen, because there was Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. What was he doing? He was putting out the fire, amen. amen. When the fire was coming back there, there was the Lord to protect him, amen. Because why the heads they were talking about was Jesus, amen. amen. And all of a sudden, one man would stand there. It was like, come on. And Jesus said, let's do our little dance. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's move around. Hallelujah. It's all about trusting in the power of God. Amen. What was it? It was immovable. Trust. Belief is the power. Prayer, amen. Stand in the gap, amen. No, don't let the enemy. It looks bad. It looks terrible. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it looks all those things. But don't move. Don't fear. What did Jesus say? Get out. He took three men of faith. Anytime you go, you may, hey, you got to have faith. Amen. You know why I go somewhere, hey, we're, we, we got this. Amen. God goes before us. We're prayed up. Amen. We're going to handle this. Amen. Oh, man of God, got my prayer warrior with me. It's happening. Amen. Why? We're going to watch God move. Amen. And people say, yeah. <laughs> Huh? We just stand there. God will take care of you. I say God will take care of everything. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a clap off. He is so great. I love that story with Paul. I love that story. He says, you know. Jesus, take this away from me. Help me. He said, no, 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 no. In your weaknesses, in your weakness, I am make you strong. Amen. There's no doubt for a minute that we may feel weak. We feel, you know what, I can't pray. I can't do this. Why are you bringing this up, Pastor? Why now? Why? Because you know what? We've all been going through it. Yeah. We've all been had that something, having a little, our own little spiritual shaking. The enemy's trying to put doubt. The enemy's trying to find a way to attack. He's trying to, you know what? You need to be desperate. Amen. And this evening, amen, as we all stand, amen, you get desperate tonight. Remove the fear. Come here. Family needs you. You need prayer. You need to repent tonight. God, you know, I pray for some of these old guys who need desperate healing. Pray for us to pray, you know, in your prayers, cry out to God, pray for the men's home, pray for yourselves, pray for all situations. Lord God, I pray right now, you know our needs, Lord God, you know everything about us. Father, we've been tested, Lord God, in every area of our lives. Many people have come in God, Lord God. If we can learn to pray, Lord God, and we can cry out the way you did to Abba Father. We say, oh, Abba Father, help us in a time of desperate need. Father, we pray, Lord God, for comforting of your holiness tonight, your spirit, Lord God, of healing. Only you can make the problems, Lord God, go away. You can solve these issues of life, Lord God. Father, we ask you today, Lord God, whatever situation that we're here at this altar tonight, Lord God, that we surrender them all to you. That we give everything in your hands, Lord God. Lord God, as you went, you proved, Lord God, you went to Jairus and asked that little girl to rise, Lord God. Lord. That's what your word is, to rise, Lord God. To remove, Lord God, the problems, Lord God. A young lady with desperation, Lord God, just wanting to touch the hem of your garment. Father God, that the healing power, Lord God, came through you. The 
the supernatural touch, Lord God, from a person who is deeply sick, Lord God, who believes. Father, we pray, Lord God, for your healing grace and mercy. For the salvation for your people, Lord God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we praise you tonight. Battle after battle, Lord God. Father, we pray for your shalom tonight, your peace. Lord, if you are lies out right now, Lord God. Only you, Father, we praise you.
are rough, and it's rough for everybody. I mean, everybody is feeling something at this point. Things may not be going this way as we want them to go. Amen. And we think that there's no way that God can fix it. Well, we, 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 really, we look at the miracles that he does, the miracles that he's doing. Amen. Some point in time, it seems like people stop believing. And still, amen, when things don't go our way, we get humble. And, and, and meekness is everything. Trusting God for everything. How many remember that? No, I, I mean, that's why I started off. I mean, some of us forgot that. Remember, remember when we had nothing? Okay? Or you could have everything and still have nothing. You had no home church. You had no, you didn't fit in. You felt, I don't fit in. Those, amen, who had nothing, we like, well, now you have everything. Amen. And we look back and, and what happened? You know, I think the Lord turns around and says that many times. You know, there was a time when, you know, I spent my time in the morning. I would I'd pray a simple prayer. And then I felt the Lord say, remember we used to meet right here? Every morning, Joe? It woke me up. And trials, and people forsaking you, and people turning on you, all that will do that. That's when we become desperate for Jesus. How many want to be desperate again? Yeah. I said, do you really want to be desperate for Jesus? Come on, church. Come on, get a little clap off me. Challenge yourself this week. Spend some time with him. That you're now that uh, you're home, Amen. And you got a little bit of extra time. Pray. Have your sanctuary. Pray. Believe in him, Amen. I hope that helped a little bit. I know when I put this together, man, God was talking to me, and I was like, man, I, I, I don't want to have that in my mind. Only need God when fill in the blank. I need Jesus all the time, and so should you. Amen? Amen? So let's go before. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. I just pray for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you continue to touch lives, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your love, Lord God, and your kindness, and all that you're doing in our lives today, Lord God. Father God, I ask for your blessing this evening as we go home, Lord God. Let us never forget you, Lord God, that we trust you in 100%. Let us be desperate for you. In a time, Lord God, where our families and friends really need, Lord God, they need true light. As we stand, Lord God, let us have the light of Jesus in our hearts. Let us present it, Lord God, as the living gospel. Father, I pray for your blessing tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen.